Welcome aboard, sports fans. We're coming to you live from 401 Games in the heart of downtown Toronto. It is time for the top four cut of the prototype Toronto League. Now, normally, uh, on such an auspicious occasion, myself, one of your hosts, Timbo Slice, would be joined by my trusty sidekick, our fearless leader, Mr. Devin Monkhouse. But in this case, our duly appointed leader and, uh, and beloved uh, organizer has finagled himself into the top four himself so he's actually on stream right now left-hand player i am joined by none other than moss isley stevie how are you man doing well how about yourself tim i'm doing well sir thank you so much for joining us uh we're going to be going through uh, our two players today and uh and how their seasons we're doing they're setting up at a lightning fast pace which i love and uh, we're going to talk a little about their lists we're going to talk a little about their seasons we're going to watch a great game one way or the other and uh we're gonna take it from there so Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your involvement in the PTL so far, how you've had uh, so far in a couple of seasons, and uh, and your thoughts as somebody who's a visitor to Canada. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Tim. Um, so I've been in PTL for around three seasons now. Um, hit top eight last season. Yes, you did against um, Alan Fung. It was great, great match. was knocked out by the auspicious champ, Alan Fung, in a very brutal match. Hey, it's like losing at... Uh, it's like losing at poker to the world champ, man. There's nothing, uh, there's no, there's no shame in it. It's almost an honor. Yeah, that one was a learning experience. But this is an interesting rock setup we have here, Tim. It looks like it's fairly well spaced. Um, I call it a lopsided teepee, there, Mossy. Yeah, I'd say so. With um, looks like a combination between medium and large rocks. We got a little imp on imp violence going on tonight. Imperial Navy. Uh, we're gonna call it a war game test. Yeah, who said Empire is not dead? Uh, I definitely did not say that because Empire rocks. If I'm not mistaken, you won the Harry Tarantula North uh, location store championships using an Imperialist. Sure did. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but was that Imperialist simply a Upsilon shuttle, a Phantom, and a Tie Fighter? That was just those three ships. So we had a Kylo shuttle with a Whisper and Wampa. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that means that you ran a list that did not involve Fenrau, Biggs, a Jump Master, or any of that other janky nonsense. That is completely correct. So you just ran a TIE Fighter, a Phantom, and a Upsilon Shuttle. You know, it works. Coordinate <laughs> is a fantastic action. That... It's, great, it's great to see some of those epic X-Wing play actions brought down into the, into the dogfighting world, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, I really think Imperials have a much better chance in the meta than people are giving them credit for. Um, I think that last fact where they hit Palp so hard just threw everybody's game off. I think it was traditional Palp players who were who were always ready to just rely on Palp saving them in a moment instead of actually trying to tacti tactically plan when to use Palp. Our players have shook hands, ready to begin. Um, the, then Palp became a little bit more just willy-nilly, and they actually didn't get a chance to really use it uh, tactically. Like, they actually have to decide when to use it now, which yep. is great. And, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why you're starting to see Palp still being used with Whisper. Agreed. Whisper really yeah. lets you pull out of the arc with your cloak action. You know what is going to be shooting you, how defensed up you are, and you can really use that palp as an offensive weapon where you know you want that crit, and it's a big deal. Now, speaking of Whisper, the baddest BITCH in the, in the galaxy, we're going to um, we're going to opt to let you introduce our right-hand player, Mr. Jeff Asiri, who knocked myself out of the top eight last week. I'm not salty at all. Jeff... I'm going to talk to you offline, and there will be some choice words. Jeff is one of our veteran players in PTL, and it looks like today he's running a triple aces, which is kind of a standard archetype right now with Imperials. He's running a somewhat standard Whisper with VI, FCS, and ACD. No callus though, which is a little interesting. I don't, um, think, I don't think he'd fit it there. I think he opted for the Proton Rockets. That's exactly instead. right. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Next up, we have an Inquisitor that is a standard Inquisitor. PTL, Proton Rockets, Thrusters, and Title, followed by an Oli, Juke, and Comms Relay. So it looks like we have two eights and a nine, which actually does play off a little bit against Devin, who's taken initiative in this match, if you want to go on that list. Well, actually, yeah, Devin didn't take initiative because Jeff came to the table with the 99-point bid. He looked at himself and said, I have two eights. Um, Devin has a PS6 with Veteran Instincts, so Devin has an eight. 
Devin is large base ship, so I'm going to give Devin the initiative so that I can reposition my multiple action PS8 aces and try and arc dodge that ship and then uh, Whisper's PS9, so Whisper can always move after and try and reposition unless those lower PS ships block him. So thank you very much for the segue. I'll, uh, I'll go in quickly and talk about Devin's list. Believe it or not, folks, if you're seeing this janky nonsense on your screen, it only becomes more janky when you realize that this is actually the second time in Devin's PTL career in Season 8 this season where he has flown a Decimator and a Upsilon shuttle. This is a, a semi-different uh, variant than I'm used to because the other one he flew was uh, the Rear Admiral Cherenu uh, alongside the uh, Lieutenant Dornitz who allows the rack to basically start where Kylo Ren's shuttle is right now. Uh, you can just start the decimator there and then four forward boost with rack and you're right in someone's face. I actually had the opportunity to play against that list. Devin it calls it in your face from outer space. It's so nasty. It, Especially it, if you've got Ray crew and you need like three turns to bank up it your It was. It's actually tokens. a fantastic counter against the Ray crew, which is such a staple right now in the Rebel arsenal. It's true. Um, overall, I think this is probably a better list what he's put on the table today yeah. than his other list. Now, both these players are going to get into the combat phases fairly quickly, so let me just go through Devin's list super quick, and then we'll talk about what both these big ships are bringing to the table in terms of ordnance, uh, and then in terms of crew and, and, and evil Imperial synergy here. Especially so. those conditions, which I think are going to be a big deal. Yeah, it's great to see a game of X-Wing with two condition cards in play at once on the same side. Sometimes you'll see, like, Rex on one side, Kylo on the other. But we're actually getting an opportunity here to see the rarely used General Hux Fanatical Devotion um, critical, sorry, uh, condition token here. Devin has the two condition cards at the very top of his list at the very top left of your screen using the very snazzy PTL condition tokens that were a prize at the PTL Open earlier this season. They look great. You went to that, you went to that Open, didn't you, Steve? I was not. I was oh, actually I out of too. town for that. Uh, I was in two. Okay. I was down in... Uh, I was down in Carlisle in the States driving the Batmobile. It was sick. I was home in the land of freedom during this. That's right, because you're from o Oklahoma, right? Cincinnati, Ohio. So Ohio's like, it's like Oregon, but, but the same, right? A, a little more east, but yeah, basically the same exact oh, okay. thing. So do you, do, you, do you like, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into it right just yet. Oh. So what we have now is... Um, Ooh, Shaken Pilot. Interesting. Already being thrown against the Inquisitor, so that quiz is now PS0. So what, what has happened here, just to clarify, folks, is Kylo Ren as the crew is an action, but Kylo Ren, the pilot, can only assign the, I'll show you the dark side, or I'll show you the dark side. Uh, condition token when a, the Kylo Ren shuttle is shot at. So the Inquisitor's taken a range one shot, uh, done what looks like hit, hit, crit here. So just to clarify right now, on the Kylo Ren shuttle, which is a little different than the Kylo Ren crew, the shuttle has merely laid down the condition, I'll show you the dark side, versus it already being done. Correct, yeah. In order for uh, Devin to actually assign that critical damage card to the Inquisitor, um, he still has to generate naturally, I'll, I'll, I'll mind you, a crit and land it on a pretty high agility ship, which is it's, it's easier said than done. Most, it isn't sure it? is. Now, we've got a range three shot coming from uh, Kylo Ren's shuttle. Looks like he's just nicking the back corner of that uh, very back corner there. Yep, looks um, like it. I would say that they may call a judge, but from my eye, Moss, that looked that look pretty good. I think so, too. I mean, Devin and uh, Jeff are both upstanding gentlemen, so they're not going to... Uh, not gonna make. Now, Kylo Ren shuttle is equipped with VI, so he's PS8. Um, fire control system and gunner, which is some great synergy because what can happen here is so Devin can shoot, miss, and then... Oh, is that in? Everybody clinch. Oh. Everybody clinch! Oh, we've got a pending judge call from our, oh, our standing judge, James Ling, from Some the me, UK. I think that looks in. That looks I think that like, clips the back of that. Um, but we'll have to see. Because I see that that range ruler, if we draw the line on the back of that, should hit the back of that base. Now, obviously, the camera's on a little bit of a skewed angle, but we're talking about an absolute millimeter here. 
So they're going to continue to deliberate over this. I'll just continue to run through the shuttle. The reason this is valid uh, as well, uh, Stevie, that we're talking about is the Kylo Ren shuttle has four red dice. If she can shoot, miss, trigger both fire control systems so he gets a free target lock and gunner at the same time, which means he gets to shoot again. And the second time he gets to shoot, he has that modification for his dice. The Inquisitor does have four dice with auto thrusters, but the Inquisitor has no tokens because he barrel rolled and, and boosted at that point. So if Devin were able to do uh, his shots here, that's kind of the whole purpose of Devin's list. They have a ton of hull, very low agility, and they've got a ton of offensive capability, whereas Jeff's list has a lot of offensive capability as well, but they're kind of glass cannons. Like, they only have a few health each. It right? sure is. I mean... Devin being able to take that shot, and it looks like they may have ruled it out. I think they ruled out. it out. Oh, that is very um, close. Really saved the Inquisitor right there. Now, the Kylo Ren shuttle also is equipped with uh, engine upgrades, so we can do a boost. Uh, big base ship boosts are a big thing. Uh, pattern Analyzer says that if the Kylo Ren shuttle does a red maneuver, including its stop, it can still perform its action before it does uh, takes the stress. From, cheeky. From that. Very cheeky. cheeky. I love that. And a personal favorite of mine is the, the title. So the Kylo Ren shuttle title says, at the end of the combat phase, you may choose an unstressed ship at range one to two, which is not probably going to be the Inquisitor, because the Inquisitor has push a limit. So you have to choose somebody else. And if you choose that ship, so let's say hypothetically that Devin chose Omega Leader, and then Jeff said to himself, well, I don't want to stress Omega Leader. Jeff has the option to assign the stress token from the shuttle's title to either Omega Leader or another ship at range one to two of the ship that Devin has chosen. It's a kind of a cheeky title. It's very uh, second layer, but it's designed to help out uh, stacking stress on top of Atani Aces. Uh, great against push the limit Aces because if you don't want to stress Omega Leader or Whisper, you've got to double stress the Inquisitor. It's, exactly. uh, it, can, it can be a really, it can be a really clutch title at a bad moment. Sure can, and you know he's not going to want to pick up the stress on Whisper. No, definitely not. A Phantom with a stress token is a very sad Phantom. It sure is. Uh, and then the other ship in Devin's list is a standard decimator PS3. It's called a Patrol Leader, and it is equipped with the Dauntless title, which says that if you bump, you can take an action if you take a stress. An Ion Bomb, which does no damage, but gives two Ion tokens to every ship at range one. And then my personal favorite uh, upgrade choice of Devon's list is General Hux. General Hux is an expensive crew. Uh, Moss, you want to run us through what Hux does? Uh, so, Hux is an action crew, five points. Um, when you use Hux, you can sign up to two focus tokens. Three focus tokens? Three focus tokens at range one to two. Yeah. And most importantly is you will use the fanatical devotion condition which allows you to change all of your focus results into hit results that cannot be canceled. So you can change one. You can change one. Yeah. So what it basically says is, is when you're attacking, you cannot use that focus token on defense, which is perfect on a decimator because it doesn't roll any green dice anyway. And when you're attacking, if you change your focus results to hits with that focus token, you can choose one of them and then that hit cannot be canceled. So on ships like Jeff's, who are truly glass cannons, it's a big deal. Now I'm very surprised that Devin did what he did with the Decimator. I thought he was gonna do a soft one bank in between these two rocks because the Inquisitor doesn't go very fast with his greens. He does his two forward, three forward, four forward are green. Agreed. And then his one banks and his one turns are green as well. And what I'm worried about here is that if Jeff does a one bank, then he comes blasting in with Whisper. Jeff might be able to do 10 damage on that Decimator in one turn. He has the potential to do it anyway if his dice roll away right, right away. I see a Rocket's coming up right now. I see a Proton Rocket coming right away. I got to agree with you, Mossy. And you know what? I mean, that Patrol Leader is 16 hull. Four shields and 12 hull. But do you know what Decimators don't like? crits. Ooh, no, they don't. They don't like crits, especially ones that are like console fires. Devin's Hux always gives him... Uh, I think he's going to go in on Kylo here. You know, it's interesting because Whisper can't take the target lock action. Whisper can only take focus and evade actions Correct. and barrel roll. She has to shoot before she establishes that fire control system on a ship. 
So Jeff might think to himself, I can do a proc at one turn with five damage and then do a follow-up range one whisper with a five damage the following turn, which isn't a terrible plan, but at the same time, that Inquisitor is now range one of a five-dice Kylo shuttle with gunner fire control system, and truly, I don't see a way for the Inquisitor to get out of there. I mean, he no. could he could barrel roll no. to his right and maybe boost, but I don't think he can fit between those two ships. Yeah, this is an in-arc Inquisitor, range one. Of both of those big ships. Of both of those big ships. Um, so the Inquisitor's going to lay damage, but it is has the potential of taking some serious return fire right now. See, it's interesting. You know, both of us are Imperial players. I, I mean, I'm not really a, a one faction or another player. I, Same. I, I'm, a bit of, I'm a bit of a slut. It's not true. It's true. I play all of them. And... One thing that's true about the Imperial faction, though, Moss, I think you'd agree with me, is that all three of these ships, Whisper, Omega Leader, and Inquisitor, all three of them are late-game pieces. They sure are. There is no great target in this, um, which I think is one of the challenges of Jeff's list. Devin doesn't really have a perfect target to go after. No, it's like, who do I go for first? Who's more dangerous to me? If my Decimator is left, you know, Inquisitor has auto thrusters. Uh, Omega Leader target locks me. I got nothing. I can't use fanatical devotion. Right. And if it's Whisper left, Whisper's cloaking and decloaking and throwing four dice with fire control system. She's just as bad. If, if Kylo's left, you know, fantastic point. Actually, fanatical devotion against Omega Leader doesn't do anything. Correct. Yeah, because Omega Leader still locks you down with her target lock, and you can't modify those dice. Jeff opting to shoot at Kylo Ren, getting three hits and a crit. Uh, Devin, is that not, evade? That's an eyeball. Devin, considering the token, going to spend the token, mitigate one, taking three, which is his last shields on wow. Kylo. Kylo now has no shields. And Whisper establishes a fire control system, cloaks again, and takes a focus token because the Phantom is a totally fair and balanced ship from, Raven, from like Wave 2. You know, the thing that I've got to wonder here is... Jeff has enough firepower to potentially delete the Kylo shuttle, assuming everything goes correctly for him. He's target locked the Kylo Ren shuttle with a Mega Leader, which means that he can do a shot with Juke, and then he could proton rocket and finish it off before. Um, I mean, Devin would get a simultaneous fire shot uh, right. from the Kylo Ren shuttle on the PS8 or the PS9. But Devin has initiative here, so he's got to make this shot count. He's rolling the shot. Uh, he's got what looks like two hits and a crit. We're not totally sure of his target. Target. Sh oh, oh, doesn't matter which target that, that is. That is not what you want to that see. That is not what you want to see. Spending the evade, taking the two shields on the Inquisitor. Inquisitor is now shieldless, and that is Huge. not going to help when that patrol leader takes a shot at you. Inquisitor only spending his evade token so that he has... Uh, so he can modify that rocket shot. He can't modify the rocket shot because he focus target locked. Oh, he's got the target lock tokens backwards, that's why. And here comes the proton that's rockets, why. Yeah, right. so we've got a fully modified uh, proton rocket shot coming on the Kylo shuttle. Uh, we got one crit in there. We got spending the target lock to modify the blank into another crit, modding the... Two hit, two crits, and three hits. That is not what you want to see on your six hull shuttle. That is a max damage, and that is a dead Kylo Ren shuttle. If one of those is a direct hit, we are talking about a dead Kylo. Three hits. We got a damage sensor array and a stunned pilot. Oh, so it looks like that Ren that shuttle. that blinded pilot? No, I think that is a stunned I think pilot. That's a stunned pilot. You're so that Kylo Ren shuttle lives to see. Yeah, his... it's not going to live because Omega Leader just needs to roll one paint here and then it's over. And there we go. So, regardless of what Kylo. Uh, oh, Omega Leader does have. Yeah, it jukes it. Juke. Can't modify and that's it, it. And then Kylo Ren shuttle goes down. Yeah. That is a max damage output of uh, four, nine, ten damage in one go, Stevie. That is an. In it is at this that point, given, given the... Say. Well, it's not what you want to see, but at the, one, at the same time, I would like to take this opportunity as a Canadian to say to my fellow caster, who happens to be American, hashtag, make Imperials great again. That's what I want to say. 
Imperials aren't bad, and you know he came in with modded dice. Um, and as I'm sure everybody knows, modded dice are how you deal damage. Well, you got three dodgy ships, right, against two giant bricks. If you trade one of your glass cannons uh, for... Okay, so one of the fanatical devotions is going through. Imper uh, Inquisitor can roll against the other three, doesn't evade them, and dies. This is a dead Inquisitor. Okay. Uh, still a pretty tough uphill battle for the patrol leader. Um, yeah, Devin's just traded 51 points for 34 points, so I cannot see... And, and truthfully, out of the two ships, the one that was the bigger threat, that gave out stress, that did gunner, fire control system, intelligence agent, um, I gotta say this is a huge uphill battle for our fearless leader here, Moss. It sure is. On the plus side, if this game does go quickly, you and I can crap uh, a beer before the next top four match. I that's, completely agree. Uh, that's Doesn't gonna sound crap, bad. That's going to get probably casted tonight, but probably not released until a little while after this one. The, uh, the interesting thing here is that if the Decimator, which does move first, does a two forward, which is green, and bumps Omega Leader, the Decimator can then take Dauntless Seidel and General Hux to take a modded shot against one of these guys with Fanatical Devotion. Right. And then the next round, well, I think it'll probably try to do it against Whisper. True. Um, I mean, and in the following round, you'll probably see an ion bomb. It's interesting too because Whisper has to decloak before Devin can drop the pro the ion bomb. Right. So and his Whisper right now is going to do a, um, I would imagine a barrel roll left. See, I'm I'm expecting the yeah. I, I'm with you. I see the barrel roll left. Uh, the, sorry, not the barrel roll. The the, the uh, decloak two left. forward decloak left from Whisper downboard, followed by a one turn right. back upboard because the Dauntless will hit Omega Leader first, right. do its shenanigans, and then Whisper will get to five dice with a focus token right. or bump and then just get behind the thing. Exactly. What you want turn. From Whisper. You know, uh, Omega Leader can just five forward here, target lock the Dauntless, and then it's doubtful the Dauntless will ever hit Omega Leader again. Exactly. And, you know, theoretically, if uh, Devin were to pop Whisper, um, luckily, it's entirely possible for that 26-point Omega Leader to just thousand paper cut that decimator to death over the next 52 minutes and 45 seconds. It sure is. We'll see how variance plays out at that point. It has the potential of not going well. Yeah. But you know what is going well? It's giving us a little bit of opportunity to talk about uh, the community. So Devin and I are always... Uh, going on about the PTL and stuff like that. Why don't you, as somebody who, you know, I've played against you a few times in matches, and you yep. tend to show up with uh, one of two things, in my experience. You either show up with a list that you just literally thought up one day on the John and wanted to try out, which is yep. what the PTL is all about. You put the P, uh, the P in prototype. Or you show up with something that you've maybe seen online or, or saw online, yep. read online, saw at a store championship one, and you wanted to try it out and see if it was as good as all the hype was. Right. Why don't you talk to the viewers about um, the PTL as a forum in terms of, like, uh, a forum to practice either new stuff you want to try out or, like, a, a really sharp uh, net list. Sure. So one of the things that I'd have to say that's so great about the PTL League is that, for one, we have a large player base that you don't see that often in other places. So not only do you get to play against a very good group of people, you get to play against a very diverse group of people that all look and play the game in different ways. Um, so it's very possible one night to show up and your opponent has complete jank that you have never seen before in your entire life. You mean like a Upsilon shuttle and a patrol leader? Just like an Upsilon shuttle and a patrol leader. Versus, say, Jeff's list, which you would expect to see as a trip ace imperial archetype. Um, so, you know, it, it the PTL League gives you that ability to go in and try things out and really flex your mind on the various combinations that are available within just the X-Wing game right now. But it does also give you the ability to come in and try a net list if you want to. Um, and your opponent likely is going to do the exact same thing. 
So it's very rare, I'd say, in a PTL match to show up and play against, oh, like a Paratani or something like that. I honestly that. don't remember seeing a Paratani in like the last two seasons. I don't think so either. Um, but what you can play against is an Upsilon and a Patrol Leader. Um, or, or Jeff Pickles over on the table next to our two champions who, folks, without any exaggeration, has four Z95s and three quad jumpers going exactly. against Kelvin Lau, the dogfighting champion. And not only is that big in the PTL League, what that's allowed it to do is it's seat down into our meta. Our meta you mean, like, Toronto, you mean like the Toronto meta? Exactly. It is could agree so with you more. diverse. I mean, um, you and I, between the two of us, have probably been to about seven or eight champion, store championships. Yeah, regional in and around too, in, regional, and in and around the GTA. We and, have uh, some crazy lists. Yeah. And like it allows you to really sit there and actually brainstorm a list. You don't have to worry about always facing a top tier list um, as you're trying to brainstorm and refine your own list. So if you're trying to think things through, the chances of you showing up at maybe a store champ or a league game and facing a Dash Miranda or something like that is pretty low. So Unless you're playing against the Pinkertons, of course, right? Unless you're playing against the Pinkertons. From from uh, West, from uh, Eastern exactly. uh, Durham region? Or we've got uh, I think from Whitby, Cam with his uh, Chewy Miranda. Oh, Cam, uh, out in Western Ontario from KW. 100% you're facing I Chewy I think the man Miranda. must have at least 200 reps with Chewy Miranda. It is absolutely outstanding he is such a good Chewy Miranda player I have to agree with you though when you go to some of the store champs you're always worried about you know some medalists showing up you've got to worry about especially if you're going into that store championship with something that you just brainchild yourself in the last week or so Um, why don't you tell us about somebody who did that like you're a perfect example somebody that says to himself you know what I know what the meta's like right now. There's Jump Masters and Kanan Bigs and uh, Bigs everywhere else in Rebel Lists. You've got a ton of scum stuff. There's Quad Jumpers. I'm going to go to a store championship. Now, to be fair, there was only about, what, 15 or 20 people there at, right. at Harry T. But there were some good players. I mean, oh, there were. I mean, National we Eric, Kane, Z. Eric Z we was there. Uh, Canadian National Sitting Champion Alan Fung was there. Our, our uh, leader, Devin, was there. I was there. We had Ben... G from uh, out in Oshawa who right. was there who Flying also had a rack whisper. whisper which in the mirror match for you must have been terrifying I was really happy to see that across the table to be honest in the final matchup of that match when you were up against a rack whisper you no, were happy I played, about it? I played a Pinkerton in my final match oh did you the uh, one before that though Wampa loves some whisper that's true yeah if you just uh, you because you have um, palp on your Kylo sure shuttle do. you it just palp a, a crit and be like, here you go whisper is a present for you and it had a bid oh, so course. while I wouldn't say that mit- list is necessarily meta it's good now, Devin has managed to unfortunately make a poor call in terms of which direction the two ships were going it was a kind of a 50 50 he could either go he straight or he could go double bomb left um, I don't foresee his ion bomb being useful in the next uh, activation phase. I feel like Whisper will de- decloak downboard, Omega Leader will turn it to, to chase the Dauntless, and the Ion Bomb will become useless, unfortunately. Yeah, honestly, I probably see a too hard. That being said, that actually might not be terrible because if you think about it, if Ion he drops Omega. the Ion Bomb, the, the Omega Leader will have to either decide to barrel roll out of. Uh, range of the bomb yep. to pursue the Dauntless or disengage the Dauntless, take the target lock, and then spend two turns coming about in the bottom left hand side of the board. Right, the positioning right now actually on Whisper is fairly interesting. I wonder if we're going to see a gamble with a K turn. On I wonder Whisper. if he's going to lollipop up board. I mean, candy cane. Yeah, certainly possible. Ba-dum, ba-dum, yeah. Ba-dum, ba-dum. Is his Whisper actually cloaked? So, no. No, Whisper did not shoot, so she cannot be cloaked. Right, so we will probably see... Which is quite interesting, because theoretically here, if Devin two hard turns the Decimator, or three hard turns the right. Decimator, he would have to retain the stress, but he would get a shot at an uncloaked Whisper. Now, it would be an unmodded shot. Here comes shot. our Ion Bomb. Here comes the Ion Bomb. I'm not going to say I called it, but... Well, it really does limit what Jeff can do if he doesn't want to be Ion. 
Devin just reading Ion Bomb because I'm, I'm I'm actually prepared to probably call this maybe the first time right. that Evan has that Devin has used an Ion Bomb, he's particularly probably, in an Imperial faction. I'm sure he's wondering why he doesn't have Sabine right now because that seems to be the standard, which would feel really good. Well, we know that the Imperial is the only one of the three factions that doesn't get a Sabine because now Cad Bane's coming out. It is so sad. Interesting here. So if Whisper one turn, she could barrel roll for a shot and probably lay on, uh, maybe not get ioned? Hmm. Maybe. That'd be risky. So, um, oh, me the playing one turn. So here we go, right yeah. Now is don't do that and play it safe. Why risk it? He's got time. Um, and his ace is at full. Jeff doesn't have to rush right now. Interesting. So Jeff opting to take the target lock on the Dauntless. Oh, and goes right on that bomb. So interesting here, because Jeff could just cloak, and then there will be uh, an uncloaked... Well, uh, yeah, if, if Jeff just cloaks, then he'll have no tokens, but it'll be three dice unmodded against four dice, and then Whisper will be ionized. But Whisper will still get to decloak before the one forward and avoid any problems with that rock. Right. Now, Whisper and Omega Leader are Just both getting seconds. ionized here. Um, but interestingly enough, Omega Leader almost doesn't care. No. TIE Fighters don't mind going slow, particularly when a big ship in front of them when they're on their six here. So Not at all. Especially with the ability to have a one hard turn the following round. It's not a lot of risk at the moment. Well, especially because now Omega Leader has achieved what she wanted, which is to continue to get an unmodded shot back if the Dauntless decides to want to shoot at Omega Leader. And that right there is the cries of a lot of people playing Omega Leader. Three dice up front, two blanks and a hit. Spends the target lock. Spends the target lock. I think this is some bait right here. I think you're right, mate. That's an excellent Imperial thing. Why don't you elaborate on that? What do you mean by bait? Uh, so Devin 100% should be taking a shot back at Whisper. Not Omega Leader. Not Omega Leader. But Omega Leader spent that target lock. It, it, so when he has that target lock spent, now that patrol leader, if it wants to shoot, can modify dice. I mean, in this which, situation, it isn't going to make too much of a difference a because... It was it, actually a pretty smart move um, because, you know, next turn he's going to do a one forward. It's just going to likely target lock back up and then follow it up with a one hard to escape to freedom. I wonder if the two bang from the Dauntless stays on the map. I want to say yes, but it's really close. Oh, Bummer. Whisper evades. Like Whisper does. That's rough. Whisper does do that. Yeah, it's a shame. A shield or two off a of Whisper at this point in the game would have actually given Devin a lot less of an uphill battle to have at this point. Sure would have. Now, interestingly enough, do you actually... What do you do here? If you're Jeff, I'm, I'm seeing the lollipop left. I'm seeing a decloak left followed by a one-turn right. Hmm. Oh, that's right. He can't because he's ionized. So maybe... Uh... So he'll... Decloak forward, I think. It's kind of tough to say whether that'll put him on a rock right now based on what our angle is. Um, if he thinks he has that, I'd probably cloak forward. He would encounter that rock twice. He would encounter it in the decloak, and he would inquire, encounter it in the one forward as well. Probably then he will decloak either left or right all the way back. It's such a tricky thing here because if Whisper decloaks left... I would say it's almost an inevitability that she would be... No, I, I know what, I'll take it back. Because if she decloaks left uh, all the way back, the one, one forward will put her here, you can and then she hard. can barrel roll still, because just because she's ionized, she still gets an action. She's not yep. stressed. Um, if she barrel rolls right, she's really close to that Dauntless. And, yep. if she bar and if she decloaks forward, I think there's too much interaction from that rock. So I'm, call I'm calling the decloak left. Makes from sense. Whisper, and then Omega Leader, I think, is just going to one forward target lock again. Yeah, that's what I would do. I mean, to be fair right now, I think the other thing that puts Devin on his back foot is since Jeff's up on, up on points, he has to chase ships. And chasing Whisper is painful. 
Um, though he has a turret, it's like trying to catch really the, nice. It's like trying to catch the deep, the creased up deaf guy. Oh, it is brutal. You're never going to catch me. <laughs> you wasted your time. Go do something else. <laughs> Um, and I think at this point, uh, you kind of called it Omega Leader. She's going to sit back and just pepper shots in whenever she can. Which is what Omega Leader does. we got right. uh, two ladies, Omega Leader and Whisper, yep. who, if you've read any of the Star Wars Expanded Universe, are both female pilots. Yes, they are. And they are both going to just continue to pepper that, that Dauntless uh, like a death by a thousand paper cuts here. Right. I mean, I think at this point, Devin's just kind of hoping for variants. He's hoping for good hits. Uh, that last roll actually failed him a little bit with Whisper. He probably should have been able to sneak a hit through. Uh, Jeff rolling three natural evades. Now, our, 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 Nasty. our fearless leader, Devin, is actually just trying to showcase here at this point a little bit about the mantra of the PTL in terms of uh, flying casual. So the patrol leader is, is pilot skill three. Right. And when you play against a uh, TIE Phantom, the TIE Phantom is supposed to decloak at the beginning of the activation phase. Right. Now, it looks like Devin didn't actually set his dial. He basically just knew that he was the first ship to activate in the activation phase. So he said, okay, I'm going to put down my dial and move my ship, which normally when you're flying casual is totally fine. Um, but what that meant is that Jeff didn't have an appropriate window to decloak. So to fly casual... Devin was just like, you know what? We rushed through your option to decloak. We're right. gonna let you decloak anyway, um, and do that and do that uh, one forward ionization, recloak. So that following turn, I think Whisper can probably just do a two forward, followed by a three turn, just get back in the fight here. I agree. Uh, Dauntless gonna take a range two unmodified, one hit. Omega Leader gonna laugh at that maniacally. Oh, maybe oh, not. Why not? Spend the evade token. No more juke, but it, she could get that back the next turn, I guess. Exactly. So think about a Mega Leader. It's a lot like a... Um, oh, what am I trying to think of? I'm trying to think of uh, one of those Pokemon from original, like, way back in the 1990s. Like, if you let it just stack up its stuff, if you let it get the target lock on you, oh, and then the sure evade does. token... Maybe I'm thinking about Onyx, but I don't know. Whatever. I if, mean, watching this game is like... Um, if you play Magic, just watching somebody that has a combo deck and slowly letting it build up and up and up until it starts actually putting out damage. Versus right now, Devin doesn't have any agility unless it's at range three. It's just a slow burn at this point. Well, speaking as somebody who's had plenty of opportunities to fly Phantoms yourself, and I've had plenty of opportunities to fly Phantom myself, you and I both know that that cloak token can be... Uh, a misleading uh, safety blanket sometimes. Finicky. You think to yourself, oh, that's great. I get four green dice. I can survive anything. Wrong. You know, <laughs> you don't have auto thrusters, um, which is what you're really looking for against the turret. And it looks like Devin right now is really trying to play. He's trying to separate Jeff. You know, um, what that's forcing Jeff to do is play very, very aggressively. Um... And he's hoping, I think, at this point, that Jeff's now going to chase him with Whisper. Well, I mean, you're right. I mean, his ships are split up, and Devin's patrol leader is worth less points than both of Jeff's ships. The, right. di the difference being, of course, that if Jeff gets half hull on the patrol leader, then it becomes even more of a thing. But the reason I got into talking about the Phantom and its, uh, its red dice is because if, for whatever reason... If Devin negotiates that uh, Dauntless into striking position of that Whisper and those green dice fail on Jeff, that General Hux could just end Whisper's day really quickly exactly. and, and put Omega Leader in a big, big trouble. You know, and I think you're seeing that right now. Um, Omega Leader is fairly separated. I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say next round we're going to see Omega Leader do a five forward. Um, but he is going to separate his ships a little bit. Uh, oddly, like I think that Decimator is probably going to do a hard turn around the board edge. Whisper is going to have to come in to a certain extent. And he's going to get a round of shooting just Whisper, leading no return fire likely from anything else but Whisper. You know, Moss, respectfully, i got to disagree with your 5-forward call, mate. Think so? You know what? I've, I've had 
many experiences having the hair, our national lord and savior, Alan Fung, in the Inquisitor, chasing my VCX 100 around the board uh, for exactly this. Like, it gets to 35 minutes in a game, and it's like a, a, a two-shield missing VCX against an Omega Leader or an Inquisitor. And if there's one thing I've, I've learned playing against Alan for this time, who's an amazing, it's an amazing experience to play against somebody of that caliber, mm -hmm. uh, or, or yeah, many sure of the players is. in the PTL, you learn so much from playing them. A five forward is a great move, but I like the three bank from the Ooh, from a mega leader because sure. it gives you multiple vectors to cut off the dauntless and then fly past the dauntless and get behind it again. Mm. If there's one thing that big ships love doing, it's dragging the aces or luring the aces into the corner and then trying to get around them. You know, I think I would, yeah, so on this, if I were playing Omega Leader, I probably would do a 5-4 barrel roll as my action, because he's already got a target locked, but you are seeing a three bank, so you were right. And I think, I guess the following turn, he's gonna push forward. Now, is there a stress token assigned to the Dauntless uh, after using Hux? Hux does give you a stress token after uh, after as an action so that will we'll just make sure that that, that gets clarified before the end of the uh, combat right. phase and you um, know to be honest right now Tim this is pretty money for Devin he's gonna get whisper at range two which is about as good as you're gonna do as good as it gets really um, whispers just gonna decloak left and though at this point honestly with Devin you may want to be playing for range one just to try to push more dice through, um, but it's good. Whisper gets a 50% shot, two hits. No agility means two hits go through. Shields down on the Dauntless. Establishes fire control system. Gets another uh, eyeball token right. for um, her pilot ability and cloaks. Toughest thing about a Phantom, remembering all those tokens it gets when it shoots. Sure is. Oh my goodness. We got a range three shot, possibly, you know, in arc. Yep, we got range three uh, from a mega leader on the Dauntless. I think Jeff may have forgotten his FCS. Spending the focus token. No, there's a red target lock token on the Dauntless. Oh, did he just... Yeah. See, uh, Jeff's got the target lock tokens oh, accidentally reversed. He's got yeah. the red one. There, I think he's about as jittery as a June bug playing against Devin in the top four match there, Stevie. That looks like hit crit from Omega Leader. Uh, sorry, no, other way around. Hit crit from the Dauntless. Shooting at Whisper. Totally fine. I think uh, Fanatical Devotion didn't kick in there. No. Because he didn't actually mod an eye result. He's having some rough luck yeah. with... Uh, well, I mean, I guess it's not really luck. You're kind of just hunting for a focus right now. I feel like Devin is Hillary Clinton in uh, Florida right now. It's just completely grasping, grasping at straws at this point. Completely agree. Uh, but you know what? I gotta say, both of these players have had a phenomenal season. They sure uh, have. I looked at some of the matches that uh, Devin actually threw together uh, this season on uh, the matchups that he had. We already joked that this is the second time that he's actually flown uh, a Upsilon and um, a Decimator. It's so unconventional. And Very you know unconventional. What? Would you like to hear some of the other unconventional lists that Devin flew this season? I would. Okay. One of his random matches was uh, Kanan with Chopper, Fire Control System, and Any Pursuit Lasers. A Black Moon Squadron E-Wing. <laughs> okay. With R RK-6. Uh, and advanced sensors and a dagger squadron B wing. You, you know you don't see that every detector. day. Hashtag double PTL bonus points. Right. Because he got one bonus league point for the random and one bonus point for the E wing who wasn't Corin Horn, baby. Just crazy. I didn't even know there were E wings beyond Corin Horn. That's there different. are. There's three of them. My personal favorite is a 37 point PS1 Nave Squadron pilot that has R2-D2, fire control system, and a shield upgrade. You know, that sounds like a harsh way to spend 37 points. It's ridiculous considering the VCX low the Rebel is 35 points. 37 with fire control system. Power creep may be a thing. Maybe. So Devin also had a game that where he flew Whisper, Omega Leader, and uh, an Omicron group pilot with General Hux, ion, electronic baffle, and ion cannon. 
great way to get an uncancelable ion cannon True. Uh, thing there. Get a munitions list where you threw Death Rain, Death Fire, and a Scimitar, which was great. Uh, he had a lot of bombers. He, he's flown a buttload of bombers this uh, season. Captain Jonas with two Scimitar bombers and Epsilon Ace for, uh, for Ship Imperial. You know, with Devin being a typical Swarm player, it only surprises me a little bit. I know a lot of Imperial players right now are trying to figure out if they can get bombers to work. Um, at least in like our own meta, we have the Rush Hour build. Which, which we saw on stream last week, yeah. Bit of a thing. Devin also played that for his second match of the year this year. So you're seeing a little bit of Tomax. Yep. Is he a viable ace right now? PS8, I get, I get an infinite crack shot unless you have Boba Fett. Right. Not too bad, especially with maybe a quick draw with yep. a um, targeting synchronizer. Uh, Devin's first match of the year is actually one of my favorite lists that he's ever created. To anybody who's wondering how can I make the Upsilon shuttle work where it doesn't just go poof, uh, this is a great option. It's Major Striden with Electronic Baffle and a Systems Officer. This could be harsh right here. Uh, countdown with Title, Sabak with Title Adaptability, and Duchess with Title and Trick Shot. I love it. Three Strikers and Major Striden. You know, and Strikers are one of those things, sadly, that I think we just haven't seen materialize yet. I know everyone in our meta has tried to get them to work if you're at all interested in periods. Um, and they're good but they just don't seem to have enough to really creep into a top tier. So while they're fun to play, you know, there's just a Our lot that works with Imperials at a low, there's such an efficient faction that there's some really clear ideas on what you should take at certain point values that are just optimized. And strikers seem to just maybe miss that. It looks like Jeff's going for a barrel roll here. Huge turn here because, because of Devin the position. May have caught him out of arc. If Whisper doesn't have the Dauntless in arc, then Whisper will not be able to cloak this turn. This is huge. The Dauntless does not have fanatical devotion, but the Dauntless does have a target lock, which is four dice modded it sure on does. a um, tokenless Whisper. Now Whisper could cloak. But that would mean that she is hard up for decloak options the following turn as well. Now, yes, she is. Omega Leader, after she shoots, will likely put the Dauntless at half health. Yeah. And if Devin can trade half health for a Dead Whisper, that would be massive. So yeah. Jeff's just offering to say, you know what, I'm going to stay put. I'm going to take my four dice against your four dice and see if you can kill me. Mega Leader taking a range two. Got a crit in there, too. A blinded pilot would be just absolutely tragic oh, that would be at this point. We got a hit, and the crit is blinded pilot. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to say I called it, Stevie, but I kind of called it. Good for Devin on not flipping the table. How nice for him. It's like 4 a.m. in the morning, is your grandma. <laughs> Forget this game. It's four in the morning, Grandma. I hate Monopoly. You win, okay? Oh, that is... It's tragic. Absolutely tragic. It's tragic. It's one of these points in chess where if you're playing chess against your opponent, this is where you uh, shake hands and uh, call it a But Devin's an upstanding gentleman. He's probably going to fly out the rest of the match and, uh, and let Jeff uh, have some fun with... Uh, I mean, the Phantoms are incredibly fun to fly. So, rolling a natural crit on two dice... Uh, oh, I mean, you know, we've got, what, a... 2 and two 33. And, and then 2 and 33? 2 and 33 chance. It's a 1 and 8 on top of a 2 and 33 chance. Well, that is not a great percentage. So I think we've got a few uh, a few statisticians in the uh, PTL. I know Eric's big into math. Uh, Alan's big so into math. Alan. And uh, a few of them. So Jackie maybe, could Jackie's, be big into math. No, Jackie, Jackie's a plumber. He's an absolutely world-class plumber. He actually... Believe it or not, we were at face to face last night for league night on Tuesday, and um, the plumbing at face to face in the uh, the cafe had some issues. Really? So guess who shows up like Batman to save the day, but Castle Jackula just to the rescue. We have such a good meta and such good people. Yeah, that's in, it. In I mean, our, it's, like, it's great in people. our league. It... Now Jeff and. Devin were both on the party bus that came down with us to Syracuse. They sure were. Jeff was the top-ranked Imperial player at this year's System Open in Naboo. Finished 25th out of uh, 261 players. Right. Um, and the top-ranked Imperial person was 25th, followed by a buttload of scum and rebels. In an uphill battle. 
Oh god, I couldn't imagine that many Peritonis in a room against Imperial Aces that day. Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to say that Imperials have proven that they might not be dead or out of the meta at this point, but it's not, it, it's an uphill battle to get yourself in. I mean, they, they certainly haven't gotten a lot of the toys and fun things in the last few waves that have really pushed them. If anything, they've had their fun toys nerfed. Now, Omega Leader's bumping, so she will not get to continue her onslaught of the Dauntless. Uh, Devin opted for Fanatical Devotion this turn. I'm really interested to see if Jeff has gotten greedy or if, yeah, the three bank left, or sorry, the three bank right disengaging with Whisper. Smart move. Probably just cloak up, take a five die shot here. Uh, five green, actually it'll be six green because there's a rock there. Six green against three patrol leader greens. Uh, I mean, the patrol leader might as well. Oh, he's, he's just going to run right out of range. Okay. You know, and that right there is how you can tell you see somebody that's seasoned playing. Imperial Aces. When in doubt, run away. Don't what? even give the chance for the dice. To what are fail you. what are the most reliable green dice that you can roll? Never have to roll them. You got it, buddy. First rule of X Wing, don't roll green dice if you don't have to. Right, because I think we've all learned if they if there's a chance for them to fail you, no, they, they, will. they will fail yeah, you. You can 100%. have all of the whisper dice and it doesn't matter. You do get me wrong. I love X-Wing, but geez, I was at uh, Toronto Regionals top two, final table, 12 hours X-Wing, 10th match, Fantastic range one, run, range one with Ben Rao. I have a focus token. I roll five blank greens. It's just, you know, at, at a certain point, and this is somebody something that people need to kind of keep in mind when they're playing, is that just because something fails or loses doesn't mean it was the wrong decision. You know, oh you yeah, really a list. A list will only take you so far. Right. Hundred percent. There is a little bit of luck, um, but there is also the idea if you don't have to roll at all. Well, if you're up on points, it might make make sense to just not have to roll at all. I feel like that was Jeff's decision making process when he was uh, devising his strategy for this match. He was like, "What are the most reliable way that I can survive this range one shot from the decimator? I'm going to cloak with whisper." And I'm going to land a blanded pilot crate on that decimator, and it's not going to shoot me. Now, Devin is opting to retain his stress here, do a three-hard turn, and hopefully throw a mega leader uh, with a rock in between them, and then hopefully try and catch Whisper uh, re-engaging uh, here. But I'm, I'm foreseeing... I mean, at this point, Jeff should just focus up, which is what you're seeing. He's got the target lock. He's just going to throw damage in. You know, like, it. it's just a question of will Jeff's dice fail him? And it, that's really all you can bank on at this point. I mean, he's chasing at this point Whisper, which is just a terrible situation. And Omega Leader's right where you want her to be. Yeah, on the, on, the, on the six of the Dauntless, away. it's true. Now, here Jeff is deciding between whether to just cloak or to barrel roll for a shot because... If he barrels rolls for a shot and gets damaged through, he'll not only get the cloak token, but he'll also get a focus token. For I'd be to, going for that cloak, to be honest. Well, I'd be going for the... I'm, I'm, I'd be doing what just he did, right? Because landing one hit on a... Same. Ship without agility, not hard. Nope. And then you get modded defense dice as opposed to continuing to try and evade. Right. I mean, he also does have the target lock, so he's going to lay out legit damage, which is what I've noticed. Whisper is the ability to roll four dice in this meta right now is so clutch. Looks like Jeff is forgetting about the target lock. Um, Only gave him another two? Just gave him another two. Omega Leader doing the same thing here. We got Omega Leader giving him another two. Oh, that He's just going to spend. Leader. Is he just going to spend the target Ending lock? Omega Leader's target lock. Just going for max damage. Two. Focusing to three. One, two, three. Dauntless sitting with three health left, about to cross a rock. Dauntless shooting back at Omega Leader or shooting at Whisper. We'll just see by based on how many. Uh, oh, spending the target locks is definitely spending it on Whisper. Uh, looks like two hits on Whisper. Uh, oh, there you go. Cloak green dice, one going through. There's your Whisper right there. Devin only needs to do that. <laughs> Three more seven times. more times. Yeah, yeah, seven more times. 
Watson. Yeah, I'm it was an fighting. excellent. It was an excellent target priority choice by Jeff to uh, decide to go after Kylo Ren shuttle first. He said to himself, "With all of my ordnance and positioning, who could I burn down in one turn?" And then he. Uh, yep. You know, and the thing is, is I may have actually chosen the patrol leader to go after, with the idea being that if I get a single ship behind the Ren shuttle, to just sit behind the shuttle. But the shuttle could stop, or it could two-turn boost. It can. It, it'd be a slow... Like, you'd have to know you're just going to slow play yeah, it the rest of the game. Yeah. But that's what it's similar to, like, a YV. You can sit behind those things, and if you're not in a rush and you're up on points... The game of X-Wing is about choosing a list that you feel is competitive, which will only take you so far. And then you need to... Adjust opponent. your tactics based on what your opponent's brought to the table. Right. If your opponent has a gaping tactical disadvantage, like a ship that literally can't K turn or turn around slowly, and you've got fast repositioning aces, the best tactic that I could think of is get your ship behind it. Right. You know, I think it's the same exact thing. Um, I'm actually really curious to see how the Azatuck is going to do in this new wave. It's one of those ships that have come out right now that, though it has a 180-degree firing arc... It can't turn around. It can't turn around. Um, and, and it can not barrel roll unless you give it vector thrusters. Yeah, and it's just... Is at that point throwing points at a bad, you know, a bad idea? Or is it something that you really need to do? Who knows? Um, but... So Devin rolled a crit on Crossing the Rock, which is stun pilot. Just bad luck at this point. It's kind of adding ad insult to injury. It, you know, it's not going to do a lot to be honest right now, um, but it, it just keeps it on. Well, it's kind of like the, the karma to somebody who had uh, any involvement whatsoever in brainchilding the list uh, Rush Hour. Yeah. This is your karma. Ooh, and <laughs> if you've never played against Rush Hour, it is infuriating. It's a great Imperial list. I mean, it's not cheap. It's a lot of money in terms of, like, the packs and upgrade cards and everything that you're going to need. But it is. when you play against it, you're just like, and there what, what do game. I do? It's like a Rubik's Cube that fights back. You don't even know what to do. And so that got, is game. So we've got the sign-out. We've got the handshake. We've got uh, our two players who are graciously uh, finishing it off. And uh, we are going to take a break. We're going to cast the other top four match tonight, which will get released. Uh, we'd like to send a special thanks to VWTV Live. For casting to us tonight and uh i'm timbo slice and i'm mo sizely and we are signing off thanks thanks for watching